um, thank you for coming and sorry for the late hour. Maybe if, uh, if you're calling from uh, Europe or um, the East Coast, um, I just happen to be on the West Coast, so it's so easier for me. Uh, if you will take your feedback and try to do this at a better time that suits the rest of the world. So I appreciate you taking the time to be here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit today about Ketchak mining with Ethereum Classic and the changes that have been made to clients, uh, especially Besu and CoreDev. Uh, I'm going to go over those changes. I'm going to show you a little bit how that plays out. I'm going to show you a little bit also how to mine, uh, how this, this miner works um, and the implications for you know, your, your equipment if you're mining today, how that changes, what, what that means. Um, Oh, we're being joined by no other than Alexander. Alexander is the father of this initiative. So if you want to celebrate someone, it would be maybe Alex. And he is the person who put together these websites in the first place. So if you want to learn anything about uh, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about Ketchak proof of work mining. Um, there is a good explanation and motivation discussion here. Uh, for now, this is the, the website we use. As told, the post is an older version, and this website is also completely uh, open source, available here. Anybody can come and help make it better. So um, this might be one of my shortest technical presentation ever because it's actually fairly cool and simple what Ketchak Mining is. And uh, my move is going to be going straight to the code. Now, if I go too fast or if I'm missing something, just let me know, drop it in the chat, right, as I go. Uh, and then after that, I'd, like, I'd love for you to ask any questions you may have, anything that may come up to you, um, this is a good time. Right? And uh, I'll make sure to unmute you so you can ask your questions, just raise your hand as we go. Okay, so let's go straight to the code because that is the only thing that uh, matters at the end of the day. This is the Hyperledger Bezu code base. We're currently here inside um, uh, IntelliJ ID, if you're not familiar with this. Uh, and this is uh, the basic project, which has been checked out from Git, right? We're currently here on the, the master branch, which is a default branch by default. So all this code is already uh, merged in, already there. Uh, it's been merged about, let's say, almost months ago, uh, feels like it at least. And the whole idea is uh, this is available today, right? You don't have to, to do a whole lot of installation. You can just install the latest Bezu and all those changes have been already implemented. So what are those changes? Well, if you go to the mainnet folder inside this package, uh, you'll see that there are uh, different ways to, to do hashing of, for proof of work. And um, there are a couple, um, there was one before, it was called ifash, right? And now we made it possible to struggle to another one called Ketchak Mining. So before I go into Ketchak, maybe I should just spend half a second talking to you about ifash. Ifash is this algorithm that's been used by Ethereum since its inception to um, guarantee hard um, proof of work with a whole lot of memory use, right? We need to show you that in a second. So ifash Hashimoto Lite here is a method that we use. You can see that we pass in a nonce, which is a possible solution, right? Um, the number of a block, if I remember correctly, a block number, exactly. Uh, our calculator is going to calculate based on our block, which epoch we're in, so it's going to calculate the difficulty. And uh, before we did the, all this work, we had some data. We had a, a block header, right? So the pre hash is the, the hash of that block header. And it's going to be part of the mixture of math calculations we need to do to create a unique uh, signed hash for our stuff. So here uh, in p flash light, uh, we're calling this the light uh, function which is calling out to Hashimoto, which is actually going to do the work. And here uh, you can see a whole lot of things are going on, right? So we hash the header again, uh, we make part of the digest, we add the nonce to it, and then we are going to use this as, uh, as the input into a mathematical function. The mathematical function is going to play with the bytes by passing them through a mixer um, and part of the mixer is interacting with something called a DAG, a 
directed to the cyclic graph, right? Um, and that graph has to be held in memory. You have to calculate for each and every one of them uh, how things are going. So if I was to go and find um, this, let's call it DAG, it's being passed in, in here as a function. And then as we go along, we will uh, pass it in and, and make sure to kind of mix the different calculations with this hard, big memory function. So, you know, most GPU uh, cards, for example, may have heard of this, that the size of the DAG based on the size, the, on the number, of the block number, um, has reached a level that some GPU cards cannot keep that in memory. It became too big, right? So um, we are able to only mine if we have four gigabytes or more. Um, you can always optimize and make that a bit easier. But at the end of the day, if you are going to hash proof of work in Ethereum, well, you have this invariance. You're going to pass in your nodes, your current block number, uh, and a hash, right? So the idea was, this is really complex. This is really uh, prone to a, a whole lot of uh, angst and fear because it will uh, force a certain type of equipment, which is GPUs, which is, I think, fine and, and great for the use case, but also um, is a little wasteful, right? So if we were to try to do something a little simpler that would scale better and linearly with the type of uh, um, uh, algorithm we want for proof of work, we can try to use something like Ketchak. And what is Ketchak? Ketchak is a former version of SHA-3. So it's not SHA-2 like Bitcoin, it's different. Uh, and it's using different uh, parameters uh, as it starts. And it's already used in, um, if you look at the IFASH algorithm, that some of it is already used using Ketchak as part of the scale prediction. So uh, you would recognize here, this is the same arguments, nonce number, uh, calculator for epoch and uh, pre ash, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing where we take a digest, we add uh, six two bytes of our pre ash, then we add the eight bytes of our nonce, announce is a possible solution, right? And then uh, we do a digest of that, meaning that we go through catch up to 56 hashing, meaning we take all of those bytes and we reduce them down to 32 byte hash. Uh, that, are, that is our solution. And our solution is not being passed back, right? And uh, the big difference also is that we decide to have a mixed hash be the same thing as a solution because there's no point um, of having a different mixed hash for this. So uh, that's the, actually the extent of the work, right? Uh, at the end of the day, nothing else changes. We're still going to have to check uh, that uh, the solution is valid. And to do that, uh, we have a little bit of a blob of text here. What happens if we can find this each of that? So the pool asher is being passed in. And then uh, for every block that comes in, we would calculate the, the difficulty of that, right? So um, let me see if we can find that. Oh, I'll do it the other way. Main validation, block do or something. So we can then validate in here from correctly. Uh, a way that the difficulty is matching or is more than what we would expect. Right. So all this is taking place as part of, of mining, right? But also every time you get a block, you also would rerun this and make sure this is normal and this is working as expected. Hence why you actually spend quite a bit of time in eFash doing all sorts of validation where with SketchUp mining, it's, it's much easier to find. That also means that your clients can, can do a uh, can run on you know um, sm smaller devices like uh, Raspberry Pis and things like that, which is always fun. I do not, do not recommend it, but it's fun. So um, that's for Besu, right? Um, and Besu came out with this, and there are a couple of ways you can play with that. We made it possible for you to create a development network where there's a fixed difficulty, meaning that difficulty over time does not change. So you always have the same chance as a miner to get a block and it's a very small one. So you can do CPU mining for testing. Um, it's very similar to the dev network if you've ever used Besu, but this time we're using um, ECIP 1049 as a flag. So you can actually uh, generate that for yourself and, and really play with it, play with all the integrations, maybe have uh, a way to, to mine externally. 
And uh, we also have the Aster uh, testnet. So the Aster testnet came about thanks to the hard work of Alex and a whole lot of people. And it's been live for over two months. Um, this is one of the bug spurs we have. So we have quite a few nodes now running. Some of them report, some of them decide not to. Um, and you can see all the things that you would have in if hash, right? In terms of hash rate reporting, um, block time, um, all the difficulty, all this is still working. It's still there. There hasn't been a whole lot of change to the, the reporting structure. Everything is working as if we, you think it would. But there was one thing missing. Pesu is not, Pesu is not the major client. Bezo is not the, the, the major client right on TC. So um, there's also CoreGef that you need to, to think about. Um, so for CoreGef, um, we did the exact same thing. And this is going to be all here. Um, and uh, in, in CoreGef, um, we, I'm sorry, something is running on my end. Okay, in CoreGef, we created a complete uh, copy of that HeFash folder. You can see we're, we're trying, not trying to go extremely in the new and, and, and uh, kind of NG approach here, uh, but it's the exact same thing. We're just creating the exact same structure. And at the end of the day, it's the same hash rate, right? So to put it, if you're a Go person, you might like to see this because Java might have done something to your eyes. Um, we create a seed of 40 bytes long. We copy the pre hash of your block into the seed. That's the 32 first bytes. Then uh, we copy the nouns, which are, uh, it's eight bytes, it's, uh, it's a long, um, into this as a big Indian. Uh, and then we do a catch to 56 on that. That's your solution. That's what you return, right? You return this, and then you return the next hash being the solution as well. And frankly, that is it. Everything else is exactly the same uh, as what you would expect. And a whole lot of configuration flags have to be changed so that you can actually have that being an option for CoreGF. Right? This has not been merged as far as I can remember. It's currently uh, an open PR, but we tested it and we ran this. And you can even see this in the, the block explorer. Uh, we have one of our nodes is a CoreGF node. So uh, we went a little deeper. Uh, on that, we actually built, uh, and by we I mean hardworking people uh, on the on a Telegram room worked on building a Ketcha GPU miner. So if you have an existing miner, you can go and play with this at home. Uh, let me see, I have here in my garage a little miner with two GPU cards. So nothing too impressive, just to play. Um, and I prepped it for this particular session. So. It's on my rig, little mining rig. I got the SketchUp miner repo here that's been checked out. Uh, I'm going to target another node that is running locally to me in a different box. And I'm going to run it with a dash dash SketchUp flag, right? So let's go. Oops. <laughs> go. So we're buffering first, we're creating all the the, the kernels for this because all these, uh, the get check many is going to happen with assembly level uh, work. And as you can see, at first, it get, gets to warm up a little bit, so it can be rejected. And eventually, it starts to create more and more, uh, more and more solutions. You can see that uh, the hash rate reported is quite high, right? It's pretty good. Um, and that's a little bit on purpose because. Um, you don't really need to have the same hash rate as eFetch. You can have a different hash rate. The reality is when uh, it's time to, to push this to a real network, and we had a discussion with Alex back then, um, the difficulty will rise to the same level as matched by the existing uh, hash rate available. And um, more and more people would switch back, would switch over, and they would eventually uh, uh, you know, hover around 13 seconds. This is exactly what happens here. We've had multiple miners come in and come out. And uh, what we see is that the, the difficulty eventually uh, matches exactly to the certain seconds average. So all the good work, all the hard work that the Ethereum uh, people have done over time 
uh, is exactly being preserved here. Uh, there is nothing brand new or like, really um, groundbreaking on that. So over, it's not a huge change, but when I found out doing all this, that people had a lot of questions and I think good questions, right? So I want to make sure this is not just a technical discussion that uh, gets a little dry. If you have questions, these are, it's a good time to ask them uh, and I'd be happy to answer anything. Um, and yeah, let me know, just raise your hand if you can. If you can't use the chat and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. And I'll unmute you so you can tell me. Yes, Felipe. Let me see if I can unmute you. There you go. Go ahead. Hey, hey. Thank you very much for being here and uh, teaching us a little bit more about chat three. I have a, a question. And when when Ethereum passes to proof of stake, will the miners of Ethereum uh, start mining Ethereum Classic? Will, will there be any interest from them mm -hmm. to start mining Ethereum Classic? How yeah, probable so is 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 how probable is that this will happen and therefore increase the hash rate, therefore the security of of the network? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so the current um, eFash algorithm is GPU friendly and it's it's quite um, ASICs and friendly, right? So if we were to move to Kcheck mining it's very clear that you would be able to produce cheap uh, uh, Kachak miners using ASICs that would eventually take over the network, right? The current eFash is better for GPUs. Um, if if Ethereum moves to POS, I would expect that there's going to be a population of people looking to make money using GPUs that would want to, to mine over to ETC. I do not okay. know that there's going to be, what proportion of people would, would that be and how much of a hash rate, um, but, I'm just looking at the existing and, you know, I've been very encouraged personally by seeing that there's more hash rate right now on the, on the TC. And this is a good thing in general, right? So um, kudos to all those hardworking miners and seeing uh, this node pool uh, coming up as well. So more is better. Um, I think if, uh, well, Ketchak mining is not compatible with the existing GPU uh, kits used by existing Ethereum miners. And therefore, it would probably uh, be a, incompatible with them coming over. Um, I think the better question is when POS is going to take place for Ethereum. And um, I, I don't have a crystal ball, I don't know. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's hard, it's a lot of work. So I'm a, I'm a committer on the Hyperledger based on that, uh, project. I can talk to you about my view on that is that I see people on this project are killing themselves over trying to implement 1559. It's a lot of work. And uh, I think they, they really deserve kudos for, for all this hard work. Um, I'm noticing signals in the community around F2 where there was a very interesting work done recently around realism, um, which is actually a very hacky approach of uh, merging the two clients and the two chains by using a JSON RPC connection between two different clients. What that does is that it creates a very um, difficult operation challenge, in my opinion, where you're going to have to run two different clients and keep them alive at all times. Uh, I'm not good at operations, but I can tell you I'm having a hard time keeping my own stuff up, right? So I don't know how much of a lift it is to, to run all this equipment in a professional manner uh, going forward. So they, I think they're thinking a little bit more about how they want to go about this. Uh, but it's good that they have kind of shown you as possible, right? Um, that's it. I, you know, most recently I was listening to Ben and Jintan, and he was musing out loud that it might take a little bit more time to think about the merge. Uh, and he said that on the podcast, so I'm not, I'm not breaching any confidentiality or our secrets. So by the meeting, this is all very much in the open as it should be. Um, so 
I don't know what the what the how it's going to play out. Um, and even then, after that merge, and not your miners will be removed right away because security is paramount. There's three hundred billion dollars that are stuck in if one. We would probably would want to have belt suspenders and, and a few other uh, things to make sure that you know uh, nothing breaks. So hopefully I answered your question <laughs> as much as I could. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, uh, <laughs> Alex. Hello, Antoine. Amazing, inspiring work. Can you say more about the difficulty I just met the girls in works and if you know how much difficulty can increase per block? Yes, this is actually part of the Ethereum calculations. So this is something you can actually configure in the consensus algorithm, and it can increase by 1% per block or decrease 1% per block. Funny story, when we started Astor, for a while we didn't have any blocks because the difficulty by default was way too high. And eventually we found, we, we brought up uh, some pretty heavy miners with some GPUs. And then from there on, the difficulty went down, down, down to the point it went down to the average, right? But we had uh, an interesting challenge where it, it required a little bit of a lift at first. And that actually gave me hope because it told me that it would be possible for us to operate in some constrained uh, capacity where you would need to have a lift sometimes to to really uh, reach out the, the right difficulty, but you would still be okay uh, at the end of the day. Um, it might not be fair to pass from IFH difficulty straight to Ketchak difficulty. Maybe it needs to be reset in some ways as part of the hard fork. That could be something to test for. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, and I, I can come back to you with that on, with hard numbers because uh, I think that's, that's super interesting. Uh, Yogesh is asking, what is the next big update after this SHA-3? Well, first off, SHA-3 is not merged, right? So it's not currently a hard fork. It's not being set to be done. I think, uh, like everything else, is a technological advance that requires a community to come together and be OK with that change, right? So all I'm doing today is showing you this is working. Uh, this is not a pipe dream. There's possibility for you to, to mine with Kitchak. Um, that said, the most and uh, frankly, uh, interesting change is uh, the Magneto upgrade, which is going to bring um, ETC in, uh, in um, um, let's see, it's to the same level as the uh, Berlin hard fork for Ethereum. Um, I think that's happening right now. We made a release, uh, and I think the testnet should have forked yesterday. Um, so we're starting to test that in testnets and play with it, and we should be able to, to get better scalability, some changes to gas, uh, especially gas prices have been changed to refer to that uh, broken meter attack that was able to take advantage of bad uh, gas cost calculations on mainnet. So um, after that, I do not know. I'm full of ideas. I love to play with stuff, um, but it's uh, it's challenging. We have, we have to make sure we don't you know, spend time in fruitless efforts. So I'd love for you to tell me what you think should be the best uh, next update. What, what should we do? Uh, you know, talking to different people, uh, I've had folks talk about uh, you know, versioning DVM, uh, new opcodes, uh, making things simpler for people to onboard. I think more infra on ETC would make sense. Uh, having L2, all sorts of capabilities. As a community, we need to discuss where we want to go with all this. Um, that's it. Anything else? Huh. Uh, wow, good question. So Yogesh is asking us, he's asking me, sorry, I'm the only one who's my uh, Korgef has unproportional distributions compared to Besu and other. 
and it plan how to incentivize and normalize it. I don't know that. Um, so this is not the only place where this happens. Uh, Ethereum is the same way. If you look at the proportion of, uh, to, to take an example in a different network, this way it's going to feel less close to home and we can be more objective about it. The Ethereum mainnet has something like officially right on, on the evennote.org website, 25 busy nodes uh, currently running on mainnet. That's nothing, right? Compared to the number of uh, GIF nodes running, um, that is really nothing. What happened uh, about maybe a year ago? It feels like a year ago, but the time this pandemic is completely displaced for me. Um, Infura had an issue where they were running an old version of GIF and they got in trouble because they were not upgrading fast enough. And because of that, uh, they actually made a promise that they would start diversifying the different clients that they're in. So in general, uh, having multiple clients, if you're going to be a production level environment and you have capacity, um, is a good idea because it would allow you to sustain yourself in case of an attack without having to resync from start. It will give you a bit more security. That's, that's one good reason uh, to do that. That would be, frankly, a built-in incentive to this type of distributed networks. Um, the rest of it is very much making things better, right? Making uh, basically much easier to run with a lot less surprises. Uh, that's something that we're all working on at all times right now. Um, I'm actually working on getting out a release of Apache 20, which is the some of the, the byte library manipulation is part of that. Um, when we get that release out, we'll be able to uh, overhaul a little bit the code of the EVM for Besu. And I hope that I'll be able to come back to you and say, here is it's 20%, 30% faster because it's able to process without copying bytes so much. How does performance, no, no primary wish. How does performance in non-mining node, just full node compare between Ketchup and Ifash? It should be pretty much the same, except that validating a block when you're doing Ifash is a lot more work than uh, if you're doing just Ketchup. So I think it's going to not feel that much different, but it, it should be a little nicer on the memory. Can we make them, oh, what is the time frame for shas free official launch? That's an excellent question. That is not a question I have the answer to. So I made in good faith a contribution to ProDev. They need to look at it. They need to make sure it's safe. They need to make sure it's secure. They need to test it for themselves and then decide to merge it or not. And based on that, they, we can participate more in Astar and see if it's um, fulfilling the security principles that we require this time. Um, and then we'll be able to maybe move toward the date. Um, but that's a community discussion. I think check mining is a great hedge against having trouble going forward. So it's also great to have it like right there, ready to go whenever you want. So I would get us ready and then have a discussion about the merits of it. As um, I think Felipe had a great point where he's saying, you know, if, if miners come over, should we turn them away or not, right? So I'm a developer and I'm gonna stick to that. I like technical stuff, uh, give me technical stuff to do, right? Uh, well, 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 we have more questions coming up. So, to, 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 can we make the me version of get started video and easy for starters to experiment mining better? Uh, absolutely. I That's something I picked up. I see that there's a whole lot of discussion about that. So I tried, and frankly, I need, I need your feedback. Uh, I put this on this GitHub IO um, repository. And if I remember correctly, it will be in mine. No, that's the documentation from back then. Is it node? Oh, the sources, here we go, here we go. It's a different folder, it's a different thing here. So we have a readme here. Um, you can see how to run Besu, how to run Corgif, as it says, coming soon, right? But you can try with a patch, you can just check out the branch, make it, and then run it. Um, feel free to use whatever from base you want. You probably want to get some money out of this. Um, and then um, you can run the miner. So we have here, this is 
running day two with minor enabled. So if you look, it says minor threaten enabled, minor threaten hold zero, 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 zero. And then we have a CPU minor here, which uh, is for play, right? So you wouldn't want to use that for real. It's just, it's just going to use one core. It's pretty slow. Uh, but then uh, a great community member, his name is Christian uh, Filipescu, built a modified version of if minor to work on Aster and if from any, any Ketchup mining network would work. And pretty much you, you build it and then you tell it to go uh, to, to, to just like you would with if minor as usual. So then the next step, and I've seen this uh, discussed is people want to know how to even get started with mining, how to buy a rig, where do I get my GPUs, what GPUs do I get? All that, I'm not going to be the best resource for this. Uh, there's a lot of medium post about that, but I'm happy to help you if you have questions about that. Let me and just capitalize on this and let's make sure on the call also you have uh, Bob Samuel who will be very happy to offer help to the community as we go. Uh, I heard that with if 2 will take 99.5% energy less for mining. Is that true? Haha. <laughs> Once if 2 is fully launched, will it be easier to mine? I just invented, invested in ETC and I'm learning more as time goes on. If it's separate from ETC, but do you think ETC will rise with if like it does with BTC? All right, let's take them in order. So um, I heard that with if 2 it will take 99.5 energy less for mining. Yes, it will take, so based on the current energy expenditure of if, right, it will take less energy to run because there's no mining anymore, right? So now we're talking about using proof of stake. Proof of stake is you take money and you lock it down into a validator. When it's your turn, you vote on blocks, you attest that they're valid, and then you get a reward based on that, right? If you don't vote on your turn, if you miss the turn for any reason, you may actually get slashed, you may lose money all the time. And if you lose too much money, you may actually be completely disqualified from participating in votes, which makes it impossible for you to come back and make up your losses. So I just realized I wouldn't change screen already. Again, resources uh, resources here if you, if you have any questions. And so you will want to, um, if you wanted to participate in if 2 there's a way for you to deposit 32 if into a contract and you get a, a key that is um, special for you that is private that you can then use to participate in validating the, the network. But you have to run the validator and it has to be live at all times. So <clears throat> in a way, um, if you want to really do that, you have to have a whole lot of validators. You can't just have two and three people, right? That requires you to actually pay attention to the network, make sure you're up to date, make sure your validator is always up and online and ready to play. Uh, that is not a small endeavor user. So I think uh, some of the value uh, of mining, which is more anonymous and easy to, to grasp in the sense that it's just uh, censorship resistance, civil attack resistance, is going to be a lot more complex, but also, uh, yes, cheaper to execute than proof of work. So, yeah. Um, and what was your question? Any instrumentation in place to alert before any further 51% attack? That's a great question. So uh, I don't, I'm not aware of that. I'm actually working separately from this on the network crawler, which is going to help me understand the population of nodes, their repartition, their uh, how much, which block is the best block. And the best way to find out if you have a 51% attack is to start looking at the network as a whole understand where the hash rate is at, if someone is uh, all of a sudden attacking, if there needs to be someone else bringing an equivalent number of hash rates uh, to, to be able to match that. Um, so I think better monitoring in general is, is the right place. There's nothing special about GetCheck mining, right? It's just the exact same formula that you would have seen with Fash. We're not trying to solve every problem around here. We're just trying to say, if flash is great, but it's too GPU and memory hungry, can we use something simpler that's going to be much faster for uh, the type of network we want? And it's going to be maybe a little more fair for people who want to get in as mining. 
Um, for POS, make the market more bullish versus proof of work. I have absolutely no idea about that. You can quote me on this. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I'll, I'll probably find this some. When you talk about if 2 if 2 has been in the works for years, and it's extremely complex what if 2 means. Right? I had a, I, I helped a little bit with it. So I can talk to what I know, and if I'm wrong, uh, please call me out. Um, in if 2 there were a couple of things going on. One, the main, the main thing was how do we solve the hard uh, data issues, right? So we have a lot of states, it's uh, blooming, it's really taking a lot of space. And we also have uh, only one transaction every such seconds, uh, one block every such seconds. So it's, we need to get more uh, of, a, of a rate, right? That was at least a mantra two, three years ago. So there were two different things they were trying to do. One is both Povostag, better, happier, uh, less miners involvement, less problems maybe down the road, which is interesting, right? The uh, Ethereum community has been always anti-miner. There's a, a podcast with uh, Jeff Presswich about that. Uh, yeah, he, he was really good. I, I would recommend it. You can put that in the notes or share it on Twitter afterwards. Um, and um, there's also the sharding thing. So it's we're supposed to shard all the data um, to make it possible to run in parallel multiple chains so that you can participate in different ways. This has not been solved, right? So when you move from proof of work to proof of stake, you're actually not getting a whole lot of a difference in terms of throughput come December or Q1 next year, according to what they say. You're going to get the exact same behavior from the chain, except that you're switching the engine. You're going from diesel to electric. That was to place a comparison, right? And um, so it's it's not going to be um, as as a big of a, of a play as you would think, in my opinion. Um, that said, it may be uh, a signal for buyers who've been kind of hesitant, thinking this thing is participating in climate change because uh, we're mining so much. Um, and it might it might bring over like Josh Mo from you know um, whatever place to to participate more. I don't have a stance on personally on whether mining is bad for the environment or not. I think it's a wonderful technology. So yeah. Okay. Um, can you please tell us what type of development CTC may attract with SHA3? Well, I I think the point of Shazri is just to really make the chain hard to attack, right? So it will probably create a lot more uh, hashing power and faster to really make it possible for ETC to be safer. I think that's the only metric by which you should categorize this work. Uh, thanks, Alexander. See you replying to Jeremy. There's no way. To know for sure, but the issue with POS is that all blockchain history can be charged in time stickers choose. That is true. One fifty-one percent attack on POS can be the end. This is a key difference. Proof of work offers better long-term security. Time frame for if 2 official launch is complete merge to POS. I'm not going to talk for if 2 people, but I mean, I've heard. Again, going back to that. Uh, if two is more than one thing, uh, if you're talking about switching from proof of work to proof of stake, then I hear end of year, Q1, we'll see when it happens. It, it, I think it's actually very harmful for developers to keep dates. It's been a bad recipe in the past. It's been a way for people to really lose attention to doing a good job. So let's give them the space they need to do a good job. Um, to touch on checkpointing, your thoughts on pros and cons. Oh, hey, I love checkpointing. Um, so checkpointing is you know that your blockchain has a million blocks, right? So, well, I think this is what it is. You tell me if I'm wrong. And uh, in those million blocks, you identified that uh, block, you know, about in the middle, uh, 500,000, the hash of that block is this, right? So you could actually checkpoint and say that anything on that is going to be, uh, you know, we, we know for sure we can start with this. We don't have to go all the way. We can just start from there and expand. If you look at all the syncing strategies that Ethereum is using, and there's something I'm implementing right now on, on 20, uh, there are a couple ones uh, 
And Basin is also doing that. So there's full where you start from zero and you make your way up and you validate every block on the way up. Extremely expensive, right? As you can imagine. There's also fast where you uh, go back in history and you find a block that is not too far. Let's say 10,000 bucks before the existing one. Uh, the, the latest one that you hear from a, from, a, from a peer, right? So you connect, you ask a peer for their best block. They give you that best block. You go 10,000 blocks in reverse. You and then you get all of those ten thousand blocks, and then you will eventually, over time, get the rest of them. Right? There's been a wealth of different syncing strategy. I think everything is fair game when it comes to syncing because syncing is such a dumb problem. It's taking you away from where the action should be, which should be at the top, right? Uh, but unfortunately, you have to sync. Otherwise, how do you know if you have the right data? So uh, checkpointing to me is a great uh, way to get by. Why not? Uh, I've seen people do all sorts of interesting things around that. Uh, one of my favorite tricks that I've seen play out with the um, Elixir uh, client that uh, we were building Mana at some point was they would actually use JSON RPC connect to Infra and ask for blocks, and then they would use that as a checkpoint because they know, okay, you know, Infra is quite reputable. Let's go with that. So I think uh, you'd be surprised, but I think it's more used than you would think. Um, I'm also hearing all sorts of like remnants of discussion. There's not one coming from GIF right now, so it's going to be a, a solution to to get all that data. I haven't looked at it because it was brand new and they were playing with it hard, so I didn't want to get too involved um, before it changes again. Um, and even Vitalik, right? He was on Discord the other day saying, "Hey, let's use uh, let's use BitTorrent. Heck, you know, we just want to share some data. Let's let's go, right?" Um, so I think everything is fair game. Um, there is ways to spam, but it's not too bad. You can always go back to checking every block and making sure that your chain is canonical. And that's the, that's the best way to do that. We'll let you answer other questions if you have time. All these Asha goes are based on collision rare concept. Say compute power and scale increases. Anything in place to detect collision and also in the design extensible for higher bit chat to three. Uh, well, we don't really care here. And it's very unlikely we're going to get the collision on the SHA-3. Um, the main reason also is because the, the input changes for every block and changes for like all those nonsense. So no, even if, let's say you have a collision. Let's say somehow you manage to have a block work with two different nonsense. Uh, there's still a propagation strategy that happens. So when your block is valid, right, and you start sending it out, even today, right, there isn't actually a notion of one block, one head, right? You can actually have two blocks, for example, that are starting to go on the network saying, I'm block one to three, right? And uh, one of those blocks is going to win and is going to become the head. The other is going to become what you call an uncle or an omer, and you get a reward for it, but it's less than that. So you, you could actually go this way, right? All the way to, 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 the, to the end and have more and more of those omers and uncles being generated on site. They have valid solutions. They would work with your difficulty level, but they were not propagated hard enough. So they didn't make it. That's, or, or they were, they got unlucky because some other block was added on top of the other block before they got a chance to get mined on top of it. So, you know, protocol networks are still very much needed, and that doesn't change between IFASH and uh, Kitchen. Uh, okay, I'm new to mining. Which, what will support this new update? No, it will support this update. You cannot use that in any setting that's close to mainnet. This has not been merged. This has not been made official by ETC. That's not been hard for it. This is uh, something you can try at home so you can burn your GPUs and have fun with it. And that's mostly it, We're trying to make sure that this technology works as is. Uh, you can take a look here and you can participate by running a client and then you can participate by uh, running a miner, right? That's the main, that's the extent of the work. And you can then also participate in, in here and propose blocks. The idea is to test this and make sure that we're able to generate enough difficulty with existing mining equipment so that we can get a secure network. Do we use Bloom filter, filter for checkpoints? 
Um, no, not really. I mean, the Bloom filter is a is a way to check if a value is present in the set. So no, not really. You don't have to. Uh, well, if to need a proof of work incurring in the base layer one for settlements and I security. Uh, well, no. Uh, what they're trying to do right now is they're trying to anchor if one block data in if two, right? So this is actually reverse. You still have your blocks being generated by GEF, and at some point uh, they get sent. The, the hash of those blocks gets sent to if two, and if two is going to run its own consensus algorithm that's going to make it part of their chain, and then anybody else can refer to if two and say that if one block data is in if two, therefore it's valid. That is how it's done. Well, it should be considered a viable option to use as anchor for if to layer. I don't think so. It's different, and it probably would not play along. I think uh, ETC has its own story and its own capacity to secure itself on that. Therefore, working together for both even ETC to make both of the networks stronger and gain a, competitive, a higher competitive advantage against other networks, like Cardano, Polkadot, Internet Computer, between other POS in layer two. You can do all these things, right? So you can you can definitely have a way to what what we call merge mining, be where you would have data coming from etc being finalized in if two, so that if two would know that that block in if is actually matching that block in etc. Um, I've seen that in bridge technology. So. Does anyone know why ETC rose to its all-time high last, last month? I have no idea, but I'll, I'll risk something. I think people bought some, and that's all I know. Any other questions? But... And if you want to say something, just don't hesitate to raise your hand. I just can't see you right away, maybe. What is your take on treasury discussions? Well, I'm I'm obviously interested, guys. You know, you're talking about money to go to developer. I'm a developer. Give me money. What else you got? Right? Give me more. Right? So why 20%? Make it 35, 40, 50. Tell me when when you want me to stop. <laughs> now, uh, that said, I don't completely understand the, the position that people are taking, and I completely agree that you can't just be giving a bunch of money to people without some guarantees in return. And um, I don't know how to navigate that. I'm new to this. I've been a high of business committer for a year. And I started working uh, on Ketchup Mining for the TC Cooperative this year, right? So um, I'm perfectly content with what Bob is doing. I think he's doing a great job of uh, managing the expectations, communicating with the community. Um, I think maybe, um, well, so I think maybe there is more to do around, um, yeah, there's the roadmap, the moderating that roadmap, understanding what's going on, but it's also an open source and you know decentralized network. So the only way we're going to be able to come to any sort of decisions by consensus, and we need to be mindful and engaged in, in listening. So yeah. before we go to a wholesale uh, treasury discussion and doing all things like that, maybe we should have a meaningful discussion about what it is we want to do. So I've seen some propositions from Mantis. Bob sent that to me and said, look, these are some things that are coming up. These are interesting. Um, what else is there, right? What are, what are the other things? Is the community feeling these are good? contributions? Can we get some feedback? And I think the treasury discussion is actually great because it's forcing that discussion right now. Otherwise, we'd be sitting around and you know complaining about the fact that it's not working as much as we would like. So in a way, look, this treasury discussion is making me even show up here and take a, take a sub box and try to show you my work. I think this is great. I think we need more of them. Right, and by the way, so you're saying this, I guess you're saying, 
we, sh we should avoid fixed mindset and focus on growth mindset and evolve quick and kill competition. I don't think we need to kill competition. I think we need to do one thing. If you want to be successful, you don't want to be in the NFT market. You don't want to be in DeFi. I think you need to do something that's meaningful and that this particular brand of uh, strong security blockchain can enable. Um, to see any other cryptography in ETC other than EFOS that needs to be upgraded. Um, there's some, uh, well, yes, there's some free compiles that are required for EF2 that EF is going to implement that I think are extremely useful, like BLS, which would allow to do all sorts of interesting things uh, on chain, like ZK sync uh, level stuff. Um, other than that, um, the network protocol is okay. We could all move to EF66 to get a better uh, network protocol setup. What else is there? Yeah, no, I think that's, that's mostly it. And then we could always have more uh, cryptographic proofs of the state data so we, we can have less surprises like this uh, vulnerability that Samsung found in the, the tri tree. So I know that uh, one of the big focus of, of Vitalik in the dev team has been to move away, try to move away from using a Higgsary Patricia Merkel tree because it's actually harder to represent the data and moving to a binary tree might actually yield a whole lot of performance improvements. Yes, this is being recorded. Hopefully. This is still being recorded. You got me, you got me scared for a second. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you see ETC working with if 2 in the future in any way, shape, or form? Well, um, I don't know what the future of if 2 looks like, so it's hard. Um, you, you know, if wants to shard, and uh, there were talks at one time of saying we should have a shard that is only EVM and the existing if one would be one shard of if 2 uh, And then... Um, Okay, so, hang on, sorry. Uh, you have one chart would be if one, you could have one chart that could be to see, you could have one chart that could be a different technology altogether, right? Because at the end of the day, the only thing you would use, you'd use the primitives of storing the block hash as part of the, the shard secure manner. And then you would, you would use core shard communications to also check that everybody is having kind of a lattice of attestations between the different shards. So then you can use that to communicate between shards because you can say, those two shards are up to date. They've been talking to each other and they cross-checked each other to make sure they're up to date, right? However, none of this has come to fruition. It's a whole lot of work. And I don't think it's small infra. We're gonna have to spend like, you know, thousands of dollars of infra to run all this stuff. It's a lot of data. Um, do you see ETC working? Okay. It is, a, is it a project by Hyper? Do you mind if the crowd distributes it? I'm not sure what, I'm, what you mean. Uh, so this is a message from Kevin Nord. Hyperledger Foundation is a Linux foundation that has been, it's a corporate based uh, foundation. The Hyperledger Bezu project is a donation of consensus to Hyperledger uh, and is being maintained by a variety of developers, not just people from consensus. Therefore, um, it's totally fine if people want to sponsor work there. Uh, is Sean Austin since helping develop ETC behind the scenes? I have no idea, but I've seen a video of him talking about what he thinks we should do for ETC and all that. I'm using we library. So I don't think he's behind the scenes. I think he's trying to help ETC. We should talk to him, find out what he's up to. I don't know. This is... If you can use the ETC chat free proof of work as random oracle, please don't need to. Yes, that's true. We could do that. Any other questions? We're coming up to time. Thank you for making it this far. It's been amazing to have all of you uh, show up. Really appreciate taking the time. So if you want to continue the discussion, the best way is you go to the Ethereum Classic Discord. 
and uh, you can find me on general channel or mining or frankly not just me right there's a lot of people that i recognize here from discord feel free to engage right this is all about bringing community and bringing improvement to distributed systems and this is exciting uh this is the forefront of a whole lot of improvements um this is just one of many right uh we don't have to be married to check mining but it's working it's fun so why not uh, what arguments do you have for GPU miners that think they are being forced out of mining? Huh. Do you prefer mining v with GPU versus CPU? <laughs> uh, so, uh, fun story. I actually have a whole lot of GPU miners friends, right? Uh, I feel like those people have been doing the Lord's work for a long time. They've been securing a uh, distributed network in a censorship uh, resistant manner and they deserve every uh, bit of money coming their way. Uh, I think that miners should be more involved into the governance and helping the community of change grow because that's where the, the value would be magnified. So no, I think, uh, I, think uh, I feel bad for them to be forced out of, um, of if one. And I think in a way this is, uh, I'm going to send you back to that uh, James Press, which, um, uh, podcast because I think he's it, got that much so much better. Than me. Uh, he talks about the fact that there's been an adverse type of relationship, and I, it's really hard for me to understand why. Right? I, I believe that uh, miners could actually deliver a whole lot of uh, side effects uh, to 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 mining. Uh, you know, think about what's going on with if uh, on MEV and all those things. That actually can be. It could actually be rewarded. Uh, and be even uh, opened up to, to a variety of different use cases that we're not thinking about. Um, I'll give you an example of a fun. If you use Quorum today, you can actually have a private enclave that is running next to you and you only send a hash of the transaction to the, to the chain. Why not have mining pools offer privacy services where you'd be able to send that data to someone else on the network in a private, you know, well-secured manner where your data is not leaving a, the either your enclave or going straight to the other enclave, right? Um, so um, I'm going to talk a bit. Yogesh is asking, do you personally prefer mining with GPU versus CPU? There's no difference. This is not the exact same thing. They are the same type of chips. It's just that a GPU is an extremely versatile um, foundational device that you can use to configure and, and run assembly code on, right? So it's awesome, right? Uh, the FPGA is a little like that too. ASICs are like a little dumber, but I mean, so it's not like one versus the other. They do different things. The CPU, that's interesting because only because you get one on everything, right? So um, one of my daydreams I was thinking that we should do something that enforces solo mining for Ketchak, because Ketchak is very CPU friendly, of course, um, because there's no there's no memory involved, right? So um, you would be able to do something funny where you'd have permission networks and be able to use um, okay. Sorry, dude. Um, So, um, you know, you would be able to do something where you'd be able to secure mining by saying, not only do I mine, we've seen if you mentioned, right, the pre-part hash of your header, but you could also uh, have it signed with your private key. And therefore, whoever has a private key is the person who's going to receive the funds. And that would eliminate miners altogether, but it would be only valid for very small networks when you have a permissioned approach. So that's just some side fun. Okay, so uh, Kevin, you're you're saying um, four startups as in Ketchup and to see for ASICs. Well, I don't think that's cool if people are forced away, uh, but I don't know. Um, and I mean, to me, the big question is exactly that. Is there a market for people who want to mine on ASICs on this particular algorithm? I don't know. That's it's really hard for me to tell.
All right, everyone. So we're coming up to the end. And it's extremely kind to me. Thank you for taking the time today. And uh, we'll see you on Discord or whatever means you may have. If you're on the chat three telegram room, feel free. Very chance. Thanks, everybody. Bye.